maybe our, our audience could consider that too. Just what are some of those? Well, uh, one that uh, really occurs to me is the ordinance of baptism. Um, I think of in Third Nephi chapter 12, uh, I actually 11, and the Savior, the first thing he does is appear to the Nephites, mm -hmm. testifies uh, to his mission, and then he goes into baptism. Mm -hmm. Nephi comes before him, kneels down before him, and in the next four or five verses, he just uh, repeatedly, uh, you need to be baptized. It's important to be baptized by immersion. Mm -hmm. and, and I want this done by immersion. And when he gets done, he says, no, no more contention on this one. See, and, and that scripture we referred to about laying down contention, when he gets done with it, that's exactly the word he uses. I don't want any more contention on this. Even among the Nephites, it appears that they were having contention. This is to be done by authority, he says. Yeah, that's an important point. And yeah. baptism by authority and immersion. Right. Now, don't argue about it anymore. Mm -hmm. So the book is marvelous in restoring plain and precious parts that uh, lay down contention mm -hmm. and, if you will, uh, confound false doctrine. So the ordinances. The ordinances. Yeah, right. Even there in Third Nephi that you describe, uh, there's a, I love the, the way the Savior describes his Father and the, the interplay between the Father and the Son. Mm -hmm. It teaches us the, the true character of God, mm -hmm. uh, our Father in Heaven and Jesus Christ being separate beings. And, and also I think of the Savior's uh, humility and of his desire to do the Father's will in all things. That, that's touched me recently, reading through that. I just well, that's it. really the first thing he said, yeah. is I'm here to do my Father's will. Right, right. Yeah, we, we want to focus on Christ, obviously. We are the church of Jesus Christ. This is another witness of Christ, but he leads us to our Father in heaven. I sat down once and just yeah. looking for a lot of these what would be plain and precious truths that the Book of Mormon restores that, that really aren't there or aren't clearly there in the uh, in the Bible and, and and while we don't have time to go into detail I just mention a, a few of these uh, detail about pre-mortality and the plan of redemption which is in Alma uh, 12 and 13 uh, the fact that the fall was purposeful and not accidental, 2 Nephi 2, 22 to 25, uh, that, that this life is a probationary state and uh, and uh, its importance. Uh, uh, there are also in 2 Nephi 2 and Alma 42, a detail about agency and opposition. Uh, boy, if you don't understand agency and you don't understand premortality and you don't understand the fall, you're really going to find yourself diverting off the, the path of the plan, the light of Christ, uh, the, uh, the importance of... Uh, the sacramental prayers are recorded in the Book of Mormon. Uh, the role and ministry of angels recorded in Moroni 7. The nature of translated beings, 3528, and on and on we could go. There's so many things that are just, it, it just is impressive when you think of all of these doctrinal insights that have been restored through the Book of Mormon. And to think Joseph Smith, he didn't have these things. It wasn't, it wasn't in the knowledge of his time. He wasn't just parodying other people here these I, were i even think of the role of the holy spirit absolutely you know and what that and the function of the, his function in second nephi 31 through 33 has always touched my heart too you know so many people wonder you know what happens after i die you know what's the nature of the spirit world life after death and now in the 40s, about the best text you'll find. <laughs> you know, doesn't come much better. Yeah, you know, Stan, I know how some things about how you were raised, uh, family into philosophy, and and yet, uh, are there any false philosophies uh, no. rest in the Book of Mormon? <laughs> <laughs> no, it, when it says it exposes the enemies of Christ, yeah. uh, that is such a powerful statement by yeah. President Benson. Bless his heart. Because it really does, you know, you look at uh, people and uh, Korahor and Sherem and Nehor and when they start right. philosophizing and right, right. talking about uh, things, uh, I, I had a very close uh, relative that uh, took that role in my life and uh, right. honestly, um, I remember as a little uh, guy when this was happening that I, I couldn't argue, but I knew the church was true. I remember thinking within my soul, it's true. And you know what? That got me through. 
But when I got old enough and started reading, <laughs> I thought, arguments, right. there it is. Yeah, I mean, yeah. boy, talk about hitting it right on the head. So as one that knows on that situation, uh, it does expose the enemies of Christ. Yeah, I know personally I can attribute or, or give thanks to Alma 30 for helping me through my graduate school days especially. Mm -hmm. You know, studying philosophy and psychology and... And that, that was written many, many years ago, but uh, that's so relevant today. Yeah. Those, those arguments haven't changed much. Well, one thing that hit me is where Korhor tells the people what they believe. Right. He said, now here's what you believe. You and I had a little discussion about setting up a straw man, a, a fake sure, man. Sure, sure. And he said, now here's what you believe. You believe that children mm -hmm. will suffer because of their parents. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, and uh, that they, you know, are in a, a sinful condition because of that. Well, he got part of that right, but the other part we definitely don't believe that we're uh, accountable for their sins. That's not true. And he said we believe that. And one thing I learned from that uh, that uh, antichrist is, you don't let anybody tell you what you believe mm -hmm. outside the faith. So what you're saying then is not just false philosophies and false doctrines, it also exposes the methods. Even the methodology. Yeah, the methodology and, and when they come at you and tell you what you believe, even though you may not know it, right. one thing you know for sure is you're not going to let them tell you what you believe. All right. All right. One thing to go along with that is that some of these enemies of Christ that are described in the Book of Mormon uh, teach that uh, Christ cannot be known that you cannot know ahead of time who he is or his important role in your life. And one thing I think that the Book of Mormon restores is the, the knowledge that we can know Christ, uh, that they knew about him before he came and that they understood the gospel and the plan of salvation and that we can too. That's wonderful. It's interesting when you think about the enemies of Christ, one of the things the Book of Mormon restores is a knowledge about Satan and his personal efforts that really aren't very clear. In fact, Rogers would tell you, you really can't find that in the Bible, but here it is. And, and we know that uh, Lehi is getting some of this in 2 Nephi 2 from the brass plates. And we're also told, more clearly in the Book of Mormon than any place else in Scripture, in 1 Nephi 22, 26, how you can bind Satan, as it were, in your life and the things you do. And, mm -hmm. and, and of course, it's by personal righteousness. So I just think it's exposing the enemies and also how to overcome those enemies mm -hmm. and uh, to not let them bring you down, which is so important when you think of uh, what we face today in, in the world. So. And, and even some of the doctrines that will be taught, it's almost like, uh, you know, I hope this sounds right, but you've got Satan's handbook, you know, as far as what he's going to do. And it talks about how in the last days they will deny... Um, they will teach uh, by the precepts of men, but deny the spirit. Teach with their learning. And their learning. Yeah, right. right. A and uh, you and I, you know, we've we've presided in different uh, stakes and wards, and uh, I don't remember going to school for that. You know, I, I, that, that was done by uh, you have not chosen me, but I've chosen you and ordained right. you. Right. Right. And then it talks about that they'll deny the power. And they'll deny miracles. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, all those little precepts uh, are exposed in the Book of Mormon. And we understand them. And it's almost when we hear them, we go, well, we've heard that before. Mm -hmm. And so I appreciate yeah. the book. The, the, the salvation. How does salvation come? What about the relationship between grace and works? And <laughs> How very blessed we are to have this book of scripture. One thing that complements that is the knowledge that the Book of Mormon is written for our day. That, that really sets apart the Book of Mormon from the Bible. The Bible is inspired and the Book of Mormon is inspired. Um, the biblical prophets saw our day, but didn't necessarily address their words to us in the latter days. But the Book of Mormon did. And, and thus like Joseph, or Joseph's statement, the last one, it will bring a man nearer to God by abiding by its precepts and and I have that witness in my life it has brought me so much nearer to God as I have not just studied it but implied and incorporated those principles in my life that really well no, thank you all of you you know the, the book of Mormon is also as you said earlier Stan it's a book about a family I mean it begins with Lehi and Nephi and challenges with their family with their marriage even and mm -hmm. and how they they come to Christ they, they come to God and and how all of these things are able to 
to help them with these day-to-day -day challenges of life. This is a book about a family coming to Christ, coming to God. And so with you, I bear testimony of its truthfulness and its blessing in our lives and look forward to studying it throughout the rest of my life and beyond. Thanks a lot, brother. Great Thank being you. with you.